After this next dish, you will have no excuse to be clueless, as, as far as Italian goes at least. We're gonna make a cream-based sauce, and uh, Deborah is gonna teach us what we need to do next. Yes, we're gonna be making paglia e fieno with panna, prosciutto e piselli, which means? Peas, prosciutto, and cream? Yes, exactly. And the pasta we're using is, this time we're using fresh pasta. This is paglia e fieno. Paglia e fieno means straw and hay. And as you can see, it looks like straw and hay. There's spinach in the green pasta and then just plain egg noodle pasta. So let's look at our ingredients. We have extra virgin olive oil, butter, minced shallots, a little clove of garlic, peas, and you can use frozen peas or better yet, fresh peas when they're in season, a little pinch of sugar, salt, pepper, some freshly ground nutmeg, and then grana padano cheese at the end. I'm going to put about three tablespoons of oil in my pan, and then I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of butter. We're gonna add half the butter in the beginning and half the butter at the end. And now we're just gonna let that melt, and while that's melting, I wanna show you how to mince the onions. Okay, okay perfect. Do you know how to mince onions, um, shallots? Well, are shallots the same as onions? No, shallots are a little bit milder than onions. But they're, are they in the same they're family? They're in the same family, yes. That's what I thought. They sort of smell like onions, but milder. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're beautiful purple color. So No, I don't know how to mince them. Well, an easy way to um, mince onions without staying there all day, you're going to make cuts in the, you want to be, you're going to make little vertical cuts. Then you're going to take your knife flat and watch your fingers, always hold your fingers back. Okay. And then you're going to make like, kind of like planks. Mm hmm Okay. And then you're just going to chop down and oh, you already okay. have little, little dice, little mints. And then you can always get a little bit finer. And then when you get toward the end, you can just get rid of the the root end, because you don't want to cut your fingers. And then once you're there, you just do that. Oh, so if you want to do that sure. that and we did last time. Just hold it down. Yes, like I'm going to check the pasta water. Okay. It's boiling. I'm going to add my salt like we did last time. And we're oh, going to yes. add, again, a couple tablespoons of salt at least. And there it goes. I just noticed that, again, when you add the salt, it sort of calms down the boil. It does. In fact, it stopped boiling now. I'm going to cover it again just until we're ready. Is that good? That's good. Great. And I'm going to mince it just a little bit finer. Could you peel me a clove of garlic? Yes. Just smash definitely. it and peel it again, Susie. I love this new trick. I never, I never knew how easy it was to open up garlic. You just give it a little smash, and look, it comes Isn't right off. Isn't that amazing? It's I know. So easy. Well, I used to peel garlic meticulously with my knife like it was an apple. I, now we know. Okay. okay. So you just need it smashed? Smashed and that's it. And you can, we'll put it right in the pan oh, with the shallots. And these shallots are pretty fine. You can get them as fine as you like. In fact, I've got some here and I'm just going to use these. Okay, great. So I've got the shallots going into the pan. So you're putting these in relatively soon with the oil, right away? Yes, and my, my flame is low. So they just very gently cook, very gently. That's very important with this dish because this is a very delicate pasta. Yes. So I want all the flavors to exude into the oil and infuse the oil. Mm -hmm. I don't want any burning of ingredients. Okay, great. Okay. So once those are a little bit softened, we'll add the peas. Okay. And then let me show you how to cut the prosciutto. Great. This is prosciutto crudo, and this is not cooked, it's cured. Mm -hmm. So it's really pretty fresh. Um, you can also use boiled ham if you like. Some oh, okay. people prefer that's a good that. Alternative. It's an alternative. Let's turn this down a little bit. Okay, great. And see our shell. Mmm, that smells delicious. Our shells and garlic are just marrying each other. Okay, so what I usually like to do is I usually like to roll it up. Ah. It makes it easier. Okay. And then all you want to do is make. Little, oh, that's so cut easy. into strips, little strips. And I'm just going to check on this. So when these soften, it's time to add our prosciutto, little thin strips. Thinner? Mm hmm Okay. Deborah, you have to tell me about your time in Italy. Was it as romantic to live there as I imagined? Oh, it was 
very romantic. And more than romantic, it just taught me how to live. The quality of life is in incredible, and the people are incredible, and they really live life to the fullest. That's what I brought back to this country. So now I still live the Italian way in the United States. I just imagine you waking up every morning and going for a walk and getting your fresh bread and your fresh flowers and your fresh ingredients for whatever you're going to make. Is that what it's like? That's on a slow day. <laughs> we, even in Italy, we had our really, I lived in Milan also, and we had, it's hustle bustle. So yeah, you do stop and have a nice cup of coffee with a friend. Italy's so, on my list. I haven't been there just yet. So now we need to add our prosciutto. And let me just, you okay. did a great job. Let great. me just, I'm just going to run my knife through it. Vertically. A little bit, just to. Okay, so this goes in. And this we just want to glaze. Okay, we don't great. want to fry this. We don't want it crisp at all. So I'm just going to coat it with the oils. And then once it heats through, we're going to add our that peas. That looks beautiful. Okay, so now we need just a little bit of water. Here you go. Thank you. Okay, so at this point, we're going to add our peas. Mm -hmm. So again, this seems so simple, and it already smells amazingly delicious. And all you have in there, you pass me the pepper, garlic, shallots, prosciutto, peas, olive oil, pepper, pepper. And now I'm adding a little bit of water, a little bit of water, because now we're just going to cook the peas through a little bit. I think we underestimate the power of simplicity sometimes. When you make a dish with ingredients that are so simple and so fresh and it tastes so good, it just gives you hope to imagine that it doesn't have to be so hard, you know? No, it shouldn't be. It should be an extension of yourself and nature and the whole thing. So on that note, I'm adding just a little pinch of sugar because since these are frozen peas, they're not spring peas, which are really sweet, we're going to fake it. We're going to give a little bit of that nature. Back. And all you need is a little bit. Just a little pinch. Just a little pinch. Deborah, if I told you what I added to my pasta <laughs> at home when I'm making my pasta at home, you know, on the nights that I don't want to go out, I would add sugar, cinnamon, <laughs> turmeric, whatever is in my cabinet because I would taste it. It wouldn't taste right because I wasn't salting it. I wasn't boiling it properly. So now I'll never do that again. Good. So have you learned something today? <laughs> yes, Good. definitely. I'm glad. Okay, so our peas, I want to just taste a pea. Mm. Good, another minute. We're going to add our cream. Oh, now this that is heavy delicious. cream. Now can you alternate, can you use a lighter cream for those of us that want to watch our calories? Well, if you want to watch calories, I don't think you should make this dish. <laughs> That's well, you can, my honest opinion. You can have opinion. it in a small portion. Exactly. I would cut the portion in half. Okay. That's a good compromise. That's the Sophia Loren diet. Right. Exactly. She does that, and she's very successful. So don't sacrifice taste. Sacrifice the portion. The portion. So okay. you, you don't deny yourself, and you're satisfied. Right. Then you won't crave anything. So our secret ingredient in this dish is freshly ground nutmeg. Ah. So I've I would got, never think to do that. Here's, it it here's gives nothing. it a fantastic aromatic fragrance. So here's, ooh, and it smells so fragrant right away. So is. here's what the nutmeg looks like. It looks like a nut. So I just shave right so off the rind. I want you to use this, but I want you to be very careful. Okay. Because it's very sharp. And just grate a little bit into the pasta. Oh, excellent. We use nutmeg in um, cream sauces usually in Italy. So if we're making pasta, if we're making a, a white sauce, a bechamel sauce, we always use that little pinch of nutmeg. It makes a big difference. That's oh, enough I know. Pasta, I know. Pasta. Okay. okay, great. Okay, so our cream is simmering. Now we're going to add, we're going to cook our pasta. This pasta takes only three minutes to cook. Three minutes? And so we're not going to leave it in for that long Is either. that because it's fresh? Three to four minutes. That's because it's fresh. Do you want to put all of that in? Okay, so you take one, I take one. Okay. In at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. In at the same time, and then once again, there you go. It's then we just kind so of separate. So fresh pasta cooks much quicker. Extremely quick. If it's dried, it takes a couple minutes more. If it's uh, egg pasta that's been dried, so we don't want the cream to boil. I'm going to turn this down. It should just start thickening up. Okay, and we're going to need our our cheese grated just like the other time. Okay, I've grated the cheese already. This is called Grana Padano. Grana Padano. It's from a different area um, in Italy, and it's a little bit sweeter. It's a little milder. 
But it's Sometimes. still hard. It's very similar to the Parmigiano. It's very similar. Parmigiano Reggiano is a little bit nuttier. Um, if it ages more, it gets a little sharper. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to use our tongs to fish these out. Okay. So I think. Ah, now we're going to put them in? We're going we're to put them directly into the sauce. Yes. Why don't you, can you taste? Oh, taste, taste one, one just to see if it's cooked al dente. Because now, this needs always to remember be to, again, wash your hands before you start cooking because you have to taste your food before you serve it to your guests. Mmm. It's perfect. Okay, great. And so, it's not too salty. And I'm going to put just another pinch of salt in to our cream. Okay, so now we're going to do the same. I'm going to take my garlic out. Okay. So I'm going to just, instead of straining it, mm -hmm. I like a little bit of the pasta cooking water. So I'm just using my tongs and I'm just going to transfer it directly into my saute pan. Okay, great. Now we're going to do what we did before. We're going to mm -hmm. saltare la pasta. We're going to toss the pasta. Can I try that? Try it, yes. Right. And when you get really good, then you can do it with two hands and oh. toss it up in the air. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just have to get in there and so see start how at the feel. sides and twist. Ah, Use like your tongs, this? yes, and fold and lift and separate the strands. Ah, okay. You see, I'm getting a little messy. And but... shake the pan every now and then so it keeps things moving. Okay, little good. by little. So let me show you a little trick. Show me some okay. tricks. So you shake the pan with one hand so that kind of levels it, and then you turn the, the sauce over the pasta. See how it, and then you lift it up mm -hmm. and you just, okay. So now that's done. Okay. Now we'll add the cheese. Oh, great. That looks delicious. And look how different these colors are. It's just this green is a in the totally different pasta than yeah, the other very, one. Yeah, it's very, very different. Okay, so add the cheese now. Mm -hmm. Add it all in? Mm-hmm. Mm, that smells amazing. See, look how nice and sauce coats the, all the pasta, really you know, beautifully. This, this is a cream-based pasta, but it doesn't look very heavy. Now, let me show you a little trick, because at this point, I need a little bit of liquid, because I want my pasta to loosen up. We like mm -hmm. pasta that's not all clumped together, mm -hmm. okay? So we want it loose, and that's what I'm doing. I added a little bit of my pasta cooking water, and that keeps it nice, and now we're ready. To plate. Oh, beautiful. And I love and how you it's like it a little hand. nest. Isn't that beautiful? That is beautiful. It's like a little bird nest with the little peas. And this is a springtime dish that's fantastic. And always finish with a little olive oil. Paglia fieno con panna, prosciutto e piselli. Fresh pasta with prosciutto, peas, and cream. Voila. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Thank you, Deborah. See how you like it. Tell me how you I like it. I feel like it. I know a new language now. You do? How to cook Italian. Mm. Mm. Deborah, this dish is so amazing. I wish you could taste it. The sweet taste of the peas with the savory prosciutto, it's a perfect combination. And you're right, the pasta is delicate, so it doesn't feel that heavy. I'm glad you like it. I know, I love it. And you have no excuse not to cook Italian anymore now that you're no longer clueless. Buon appetito!